Hi guys, in today's video we are going to discuss the th three main theorems in bond valuation which can also play a major role in uh, analyzing your answer and also there might be some tricky questions coming from this concept too. In case if you haven't seen the introduction part of bond valuation, I will paste the links in the description box and you can have a look and you can come to this because if you are just seeing this uh, all of a sudden you might get a bit confused okay so make sure that you are having a clear idea on this uh, the terms that we are using in this particular concept of bond valuation so let me tell you that you need to be very clear about two main uh, words that is like two main concepts one is required rate of return another one is coupon rate these are the two main topics where you shouldn't confuse between these two see i am representing coupon rate uh, with cr or and then required rate of return with k in my examples right so i just want to give you a clear idea what is coupon rate and required rate of return please reason carefully coupon rate it is the fixed rate okay i can say that it is the fixed uh, in interest rate i can say so it is the fixed rate of interest it is the fixed rate of interest on the fixed face value okay uh, or we can say it is the fixed rate of interest on face value or the bonds face value okay that can also be done okay so in order to get not to get much confused you can say it's the fixed interest on bonds face value so i hope you have a clear idea about what is face value so face value is something like the value on which the bonds are issued by that particular firm or the government so according to that face value they will issue some fixed rate of interest which is called as coupon rate then what is required rate of return see suppose let's say a person a is here and he wants to invest uh, regarding the bonds in some particular firm so he will uh, try to expect something from this right so for sure he needs some return for sure he will expect those returns like if he is investing for sure we will expect something from that uh, investment right so that is called required rate of return like here it's completely about required rate of return it is the interest rate that a person who is investing is expecting or i can say that the minimum return an investor expects to achieve by investing in a project like suppose here a person is there he is investing so the minimum return i can say it as the minimum return an investor so here a is an investor so he is investing so the minimum return an investor expects so here he is not getting it he is just expecting if i invest i might get this much of return so the minimum return an investor expects to achieve by investing in a project is called as required rate of return so please be careful with uh, these two terms required rate of return and coupon rate or another word for coupon rate is interest rate okay so these are the two main things that you need to be aware of so that you will never get doubt or confused in this theorems okay and i hope you already have an idea about ytm yield to maturity current yield market price face value so without any further delay we will go ahead with the theorems so the first theorem the theorem one that i am going to discuss is completely the relationship between any guesses okay so the relationship between required rate of return and the coupon rate so these are the this the relation between these two is our theorem one 
so there is a small things uh, that you need to take it into notice because it can also help you to analyze your answers whether you're getting a correct answer or not okay so as we are analyzing with coupon rate and uh, required rate of return if coupon rate is greater than required rate of return if coupon rate is greater than required rate of return means the company offering rate is greater than the expected uh, return of an investor then okay then market price will be greater than face value okay remember this order because if coupon rate is greater than required rate of return market price will be greater than face value if you are just uh ex interchanging these terms like face value less than market price like if you are taking coupon rate is greater than required rate of return then face value is less than market price it might create and some another confusion right so just remember that coupon rate is greater than required rate of return then market price is greater than face value so that it will avoid your confusion similarly if coupon rate is less than required rate of return what will happen yes correct market price is less than the face value and we also have the last one what if coupon rate is equals to required rate of return market price will be equal to face value like suppose when they have given uh, like let's take uh, the quick example of your uh, problems if they have given you the coupon rate required rate of return and the time to maturity and also the face value and they are asking you to find market price so when you are finding this market price if coupon rate is greater than market, uh, required rate of return and if you get like let's say face value is 1000 and if you get one something like this obviously your answer is correct right if it is getting 900 it means somewhere you went wrong got it so using this theorem you can easily predict your answers for sure yes so this is one of the trick and this is the most important theorem that one must remember so this is theorem 1 relationship between required rate of return and coupon rate i hope this helped like suppose let's take coupon rate is 12% and required rate of 10% so like the if the face value is 1000 the market price can be around uh, something like this uh if i say vice versa if it is 8% and if it is 10% it will be like less than if the face value is 1000 it will be around 970 960 around it depends on the number of years also at the same time okay remember the concept it also depends on number of years got it next if coupon rate is great uh, equals to required rate of return for sure this will be 1000 and this will also be 1000 remember this might come in your mcq questions so please pay some attention here okay so i hope you have an clear idea about theorem 1 so without any further ado we can go ahead with theorem number 2 so the next theorem is theorem 2 which is completely about discussing about the effect of number of years to maturity okay so i told you right years of maturity can also play an important role in determining the market price yield to maturity and everything right so it also plays an important role in also calculating the market price so please remember one thing that if if required rate of return if required rate of return is greater than the coupon rate then the discount on bond declines when it declines as maturity approaches so as maturity approaches means let me take you a quick example and then reiterate the same sentence once again okay let's say i have bought the bond at a uh, 
thousand rupees. Okay, let's say I have bought the bond at zero, uh, like thousand rupees in the zero at year, right? There will not be any year. So after one year, I can see there is some decline, and later on a big decline. Okay, and so on. It will go ahead, and when it comes to the final year, okay, let's say that my uh. so the 550 year that means like it will be 4 here it will not be 5 let me tell you why because here if i'm starting with 0 and it is 5 so it will be like 1 2 3 and 4 right so it will be like 0th year i have already covered this right 1000 so here in the last year that is in the nth year okay so in the nth year it will be around like let's say the fifth year of the bond it will be around uh, 940.41 something like that it means when the required rate of return is greater than coupon rate the discount on the bond goes on decreasing okay so it goes on decreasing and when i get at the end it will be less than my face value okay like less than the value that i have bought so as the maturity increases as the maturity well, like when i am approaching near to my maturity period that is approaching near to my fifth year then it will be decreasing along with this so this is the effect of number of years of maturity let's say if required rate of rate is less than coupon rate then what will happen then it will start increasing it will not decline and it will not uh, like decrease so as the maturity period increases it keeps on increasing okay that will be like the bond will be at premium so it will be at uh, like this and so on in this year it might be around uh, 1400 something like that means for sure it will be it will see some increase in it okay so that is what this effect of numbers of years of maturity tells you okay so for sure required rate and coupon rate plays a role along with the number of years to maturity also okay so this is about theorem 2 next we have theorem 3 theorem 3 is all about yield to maturity it also has the theorem regarding yield to maturity so let's say let's say that we have the we have given some yield to maturity and also the coupon rate so here the longer the term of maturity the greater will be the change in price with a given change in yield to maturity and also i can say that yield to maturity is something like it is reflecting the bond's price also to give you a clear idea i can say that if like obviously ytm will be in percentages right so if i say there is a 1 percentage decrease in yield to maturity then my market price like then that bonds market price will increase okay market price will increase similarly if i say there is a 1% increase in yield to maturity then my market price will decrease okay so this is the point that you need to remember next we have with respect to market price and face value if market price is less than face value then ytm will increase okay and if market price is greater than face value one second if market price is greater than face value then yield to maturity decreases so these are this is the third theorem that you need to remember okay so these are the theorems that will help you to 
have a clear idea about uh, the exam and also it will let you know that whether you are getting the accurate result or not and there might be some questions like uh, what if if market price is less than face value then what will happen for e to maturity so there might be some this tricky questions too so just revise this th three theorems clearly and completely so that you will get a overall idea about this bond valuation so that's the end of bond valuation topic and let's see with another next topic in the coming video okay until then bye bye all the best for your exams and if possible please like share and subscribe to my channel learn with smiley bye bye